lots of clouds today. At least it's not raining. And what's going on today? I guess this first one was kind of interesting. It talked about that switchblade drone that you've heard of in the news before. How about this one where they're actually showing what it looks like because, I guess, your adversary recorded it. This one here says, the first external view of Ukrainian Switchblade 600 loitering munition donated by the US Russian soldiers filming the wreckage after detonation. So as it would appear, it's a Russian soldier or something like that as they say, it's going to this destroyed Switchblade, taping it, I guess commenting about it from what he sees. And like here they talk about how this is a newer model, it says compared to the SB300, the SB600 can carry a more powerful payload including anti-armor and can hit targets over 40 kilometers away. It always makes me wonder too, since they say this is a soldier that recorded this, wouldn't there be more strict rules and guidelines for these types of people to be posting stuff like these? You would think you'd want to keep everything I guess under wraps, correct? Like how did this even get out? At the same time, now that they have it, it makes me wonder if they'll take it and try to reverse engineer it because it seems like in many ways there's a lot of parts there that they could learn from. I believe I did read an article of that before where, for example, there was an underwater drone or something like that and then Russia or somebody, they reverse engineered the whole thing. And this was kind of an interesting read. You know, a lot of companies are trying to make drones fly longer, carry heavier payloads. How about this one where these guys, they, I guess they wanted to try to focus more on how to stop the thing from, I guess, crashing and being disabled. This one says, a soft-bodied aerial robot for collision resilience and contact reactor perching. Current aerial robots demonstrate limited interaction capabilities in unstructured environments when compared with their biological counterparts. Some examples include their inability to tolerate collisions and to successfully land or perch on objects of unknown shapes, sizes, and textures. I have seen some drones where they show it hanging on walls and all that. And I guess in terms of how you would stop, I guess, this drone from just being disabled when it crashes. This one says, Soft Robotics has emerged as a promising solution to approach the problem of collision resilience and safe perching. Compliant materials have been utilized to design soft or foldable wings, deformable rotors, compliant joints and armatures, and compliant graspers or landing gears. So that's kind of interesting. One of those things where there seems to be always some kind of drawback, it says due to their limited grasping speeds, they resort to hovering closely or landing on the perch before grasping. They also sometimes require active actuation to maintain constant grasping or perching position which reduces the overall system efficiency. And so what do they do? It says, in this work we develop a novel inflatable soft bodied aerial robot that can tolerate high impact collisions with the environment in any direction as shown in figure 1A and D. Sobar highlights a lightweight nomadic frame capable of modulating its stiffness for contact resilience and flight stability as shown in figure 1C. And as they say, it makes it more portable and all. Again, it's just kind of interesting about the trade-offs, but when will we get there in terms of we'll have all that flexibility? Something that could, I guess, withstand things like collision and all that, and at the same time, will still maintain things like its speed. By the way, it's good to see there's people trying to innovate in all aspects, not just say, again, just a flight and being able to carry more weight.
Alright, see you guys later.